the things we know about numbers and prime numbers, and one of the things that makes prime numbers so special is that they're this sort of this building block for all the other numbers. Yes. Using multiplication. Multiplying, yes. Wouldn't it be, this would be a whole new <laughs> thing if they're also building blocks using addition. <laughs> That's true. Now, using multiplication is sort of special because there's a unique way of writing any number as a product of prime. So they're not only the building blocks, they just exactly tell you how numbers are put together. They, they're the key. Whereas adding two primes and getting a number is a really sloppy process, as we've, as we've described. It's not, not a key to anything at all. Goldbach's conjecture is so famous that people write novels about it. There's a really fun one called Uncle Petros and the Goldbach Conjecture. And in it, uh, the uncle, who's a mathematician, tries to solve it and gets closer and closer and finally goes mad in the attempt. And the, the conceit of the novel, I think, is that the reason Goldbach hasn't been proved is that it drives everyone mad who gets close. Professor, I mean, a few years ago now, a, a chap named Andrew Wiles emerged from his attic and he had, <laughs> he had proven for Fermat. Mars' last theorem. He did indeed. Very or he thought he had anyway. Oh, yeah. later, <laughs> on, later on, he finished the proof. If someone emerges tomorrow and has cracked Goldbach, mm -hmm. how will they rank in the sort of, in the pecking order? Fermat was a little different because, first of all, it started a huge amount of algebraic number theory. Just starting in the mid-19th century, people thought they figured out a path to proving it. Didn't work, actually. But it just derived reams of wonderful, wonderful mathematics. So that made Fermat important a little bit. Then it kind of died out in interest. It was not clear that it would get you anywhere. But Ken Ribbett, who's here at Berkeley, actually made the link between, and, and um, Gerhard Frey, I think is his name, yeah. made the link between Fermat and a piece of number theory which was much more central in modern number theory. And after that, the subject took off. And that's, that's when Andrew Wiles realized he might have a chance of actually proving it. And it's because of that link that Fermat became important again. And subsequent to to Wiles' um, proof, the, the rest of the story was uncovered in a way which made the link much stronger and really has given Fermat a place in the canon. So I think Fermat is a much more important theorem than Goldbach would be. Or depending on how Goldbach is proved. Depending on how Goldbach is proved, indeed. Indeed. The analytic number theorists like to count things, like the number of ways of writing a, an integer as the sum of two primes. And so it could be a, a very important thing there. Analytic number theory has exploded in recent years with theorems like the theorems about the primes infinitely, arbitrarily many primes in an arithmetic progression, or the gaps between primes, Zhang's theorem and Maynard's theorem. Well, it's very unusual behavior. And, uh, you know, you can say in retrospect that it was really um, justified because he was afraid that people would kind of jump all over it because of the importance of the modularity conjecture and Fermat's last theorem.